Hey everyone, Dr. Eric Lindquist here, back with Sauna Minutes, and we are going to look at that ubiquitous ropey cat bowel um, that we see over and over and over again. And and is it, you know, we have these these chronic triad cats, quote unquote, whatever that is, um, and they're losing weight and they're chronic vomiters and uh, is it neoplasia or is it not? So this is how we interpret these intestinal thickenings that you may be palpating on these cats that may be losing weight and maybe they're malassimilation or maldigestive cats, or maybe they're emerging rounds on neoplasia. Occasionally they are dry form FIP until we get a good easy way to get full thickness intestinal biopsies. We really can't know a lot of its guesswork, but I can tell you that uh, this I'm going to show you how to distinguish neoplastic criteria in cat ultrasounds. So this is a this is an eight year old Abyssinian cat that's you know a chronic vomiter. He's losing weight, ain't doing right, this sort of thing. And and so when we see this intestinal thickening, let's count the layers. And remember, count from the outside in. So you have the serosa layer followed by the hypochoic muscularis followed by the thin hyperechoic submucosa layer, that's your surgical holding layer, and then your mucosa. And in portions of this intestine, we have a one-to-one -one muscularis mucosal ratio, which should be about one-to-three, because the muscularis should be thin, right? Um, but you can see it, it's diffusely thickened here, but we still have proper layering, and therefore, the neoplastic criteria is not present. We have idiopathic muscularis hypertrophy. And this is typical of inflammatory bowel disease. It's not obviously histopathological ultrasound. If we're have, in the perfect world, we get full thickness off of these things. Maybe we do intraoperative ultrasound and we get full thickness from the areas that are more prominent, like this muscularis that's more prominent here as opposed to here, but the submucosal layer is still intact all the way through. Right. Um, so that's what I'm looking at when I'm looking at these intestinal tracts. I'm looking for that submucosal layer to get disrupted. And it's really in good shape all the way around. So I'm leaning towards more inflammatory bowel with idiopathic muscularis hypertrophy as opposed to round cell neoplasia. Obviously, round cell neoplasia, lymphoma, mast cell disease can can start to look like this. Maybe this is a precancerous state. We don't really know until we get histopath on it. And it also depends on where you take your histopath. If you take your histopath here, and uh, guided by intraoperative ultrasound, you may have a more dramatic result than say, oh, an area that's uh, something like this, right? Um, where the muscularis isn't this thickened, or maybe the submucosa is gonna give you a different read than it would here because maybe it's a little bit thicker here. Um, also, we have the typical mesenteric lymph nodes that are in, uh, enlarged. Now, this is the cecum, the dirty shadow of the cecum, right? So if you wanna follow the ileocecal, then you look for the dirty shadow of the cecum until the ileum comes in, usually comes into the right. And I think the next clip is gonna show that to us. But uh, let's see if we have any nodes here. Uh, yeah, here we go. These are typical mesenteric lymph nodes. They're longer than they are wide. Therefore, they're more likely reactive. Obviously, histopath cytology, special testing, and so forth are important. But um, these are the tendencies that we see sonographically. So if we look at this video. This is a very nice video, just kind of catching the mesenteric root and jejunum and ileum. And then we go to the next Next one, this video is a little bit faster, but we see the ileocecal valve here. This is the typical wagon wheel of the ileocecal going into the cecum. So I look for the dirty shadow here and then back it on into the ileum until I get the wagon wheel. And that's how I get the ileocecal. But you can see there's some mesenteric nodes and those are fairly normal to slightly enlarged. Length to width ratio is maintained. Here you go, the ileum into the cecum. That's what you want to try to find. And you can sweep between the kidneys and get that as well as far as a target. But this is a chronic inflammatory bowel type cat. Um, and uh, hopefully this helps. You're going to run into this all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I want to think it's just normal for cats these days because we see this all day long. But there's no neoplastic criteria, which is the way that I would word this. And um, so differentials, inflammatory bowel. Rarely you'll come up with a dry form FIP on those really difficult cats that don't respond, um, even though there's no neoplastic criteria overtly here. Um, you'll have that surprise every once in a while. Here are some nodes. So you may get a different, different histopath on this node as opposed to another node that's less 
um, less prominent. So you, you really want to take as many biopsies as you can on those difficult cases. Like this node is probably going to give you a mild uh, reactive node, whereas this one may be moderate. Maybe you culture this and you get a bug out of there. You don't know until we sample these. But anyway, that's how that's how I uh, interpret these um, inflammatory bowel cats. And a lot of times they have a little prominent irregular pancreas or active pancreatitis. And is it inflammatory bowel today and pancreatitis tomorrow or vice versa or cholangitis? I just um, really don't know. They 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 change they change all the time. But once inflammatory bowel cat, always an inflammatory bowel cat. Once pancreatitis cat, always a pancreatitis cat. It's just a matter of when they're going to pop up and become clinical, or is this a precancerous state that they turn the neoplasia later on? We really don't know. But you can see neoplasia also uh, with uh, neoplastic criteria in per certain sections of the bowel and not in others. So it's very important that you run the whole bowel with high resolution like we have here so you can make out the layers adequately and make sure there's no neoplastic criteria. And if you find neoplastic criteria, do interoperative ultrasound. Find that area that where you have mural detail loss, which, you know, muscular and the submucosa is in good shape here. But if you find an area where you have detail loss in the wall, that's the area you want to sample or cut out. So hopefully these quick tips will help you out. Hope you're enjoying sauna minutes and uh, thanks for listening. Always come to saunapath.com. We're always here for you.